Hello, what's your name, sir? My name is James Roby. Hello, James Roby. Where are you from? I am from San Diego, California, although I've lived in Kentucky, Lexington, Kentucky now for about 20 years. So, Kentucky is where you came from? Well, I actually came well, from... where you came from for this exhibit? I came from Lexington, Kentucky, yes. I, I drove to Maryland to deliver some equipment in my business, and then I got on a plane and flew down to Tampa. Oh, wow, that's a long fly, isn't it? I'm about to fly back, yeah. I came down just for the day. Oh, wow. You're not going to stay till tomorrow? I wish I could, but I happen to have a business, and I've got a lot of uh, responsibilities to take care of back home, and so... I'm glad I was able to make it today, though. It was very important to be here. I was, I'm glad that I was. I wish I could be here tomorrow, but unfortunately, duty All right. calls. All right. Well, that stinks that you're not going to be here. What are you here with? Like, what okay. do you have for I came us? with my book, which is the first book that was ever written on the history of turning water into fuel. It's called Water Car, How to Turn Water into Hydrogen Fuel. And as it says here, this book was written as a result of my experience as a curator of the Kentucky Water Fuel Museum. A curator? What is that? A curator is a really important sounding title for someone who turns an old shop into a museum. Okay. So it's a person who gathers exhibits and then presents them to the public. That's a museum curator. Oh, okay. A person who manages a museum. Okay. Um, what do you have here with us today? Um, what I brought with me to show is something that the man who made it actually he came here too because he lives in Florida his name is Bill Lang and he was on the program this morning and one of the problems that you face when you make uh, flammable gas from the water when you break water down you get hydrogen and oxygen okay you get two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen right? that's why it's called H2O and it actually the molecule might look something like Mickey Mouse's head you've got a big uh, oxygen atom and you got two small hydrogen atoms okay. like where the ears go mm -hmm. and that's about the way a hydrogen atom or a, a water molecule looks I suppose well when you separate those two ears off the head of the mouse then what you get is a, a flammable gas but you also get the oxidizer or the oxygen needed for that gas to burn so what that means is that if you have say a tube a hose leading from your chamber where you're breaking the water down you see all these chambers around here people have been showing off and you have that gas those two gases flowing together out of that hose uh-oh if someone lights that hose or if there's a spark and lights it because the oxygen is there with the flammable gas, it can come right back and blow up the chamber where you're making it. And I'm talking about blow up like actually send pieces through the ceiling. That's how big of an explosion it can be. About how tall do you think this ceiling is? Oh, it's probably 10 foot off the ground. 10 feet? Yeah, but there are people who've actually put a hole through the roof of their building because the chamber blew up. Now, how do you stop that? That's what this is all about. This is all about stopping the explosion, okay? Mm -hmm. So let's say, for instance, that you are um, you're driving your car, and you've got hydrogen and oxygen going in, and you're using it as fuel, and then your car backfires, which is that explosion that sometimes happens when a car is going down the road. All of a sudden, you hear this bang. sounds like a gunshot, and it's a backfire. Well, that kind of backfire, if you didn't have a device like this, could go back all the way to the chamber where you're making your gas and cause it to blow up. Wow. Okay? So this is a very important invention, and it actually goes back to an inventor by the name of Nikola Tesla, who was a genius Yugoslavian, I believe, or Serbian in, uh, inventor who came to the United States in the 1800s. And it was he who was responsible for us having all this electricity because he discovered how to generate AC current, alternating current. And for instance, Niagara Falls is where the first big uh, power generating station was put. And it was his work that did that. He's the one who installed it. Uh, very wealthy man by the name of Westinghouse. So, what is this? Okay, so Tesla actually came up with this, this concept of being able to stop that explosion as it's rushing back to the chamber to try to blow everything up that it can. This is like slamming the door shut and keeping it from happening. Pause. Ready? Okay. So what, what happens here is, this is what's called a solid state 
pneumatic circuit. In other words, there was a gentleman here who was a guest of this show today, and he had some experience in this kind of um, science, if you want to call it that, or technology, this kind of engineering. And solid state, because there's no moving parts, it's solid, right? Mm -hmm. And pneumatic, because pneuma is a Greek word for air, and so it, it has to do with the movement of air. And he got up today and he explained how it is that this thing could actually stop a flame front. And how will it do that? Well, apparently, as the flame rushes through here and it comes around in this, the way in which this thing is designed, if it sort of collides with itself and, and stops itself from, from progressing. And if it doesn't happen here, it'll happen there. And if it doesn't happen there, it'll happen there. So these are like safety devices. Here's one safety device, here's another, here's another, and here's another. So no matter what, it can, it, what if it doesn't? Will it always blow itself up? Well, we would hope that it would successfully stop it. It would be easy to test. All you have to do is connect an electrolyzer to this, light a match over here, and if it blows up... Then it didn't work. Well, what happens is when, when you burn hydrogen and oxygen, when you light it, it gives off a flash. It's, not, it's sort of like a firecracker rather than, say, um, um, like if you light, if you pour a little gasoline on the table here and light it, it'll go poof. It won't make a flash of light, it'll make a bright orange flame, right? Because that's what, you know, the various ingredients in gasoline do. But when you burn hydrogen and oxygen, it makes a flash of light. It goes And you'll probably see it tomorrow if you didn't see it today. You ask someone out there to light some hydrogen, and it'll make a big loud firecracker sound and, and it'll oh, be a flash of light. It actually releases a little bit of electricity too. So what you would see is you'd see that flash coming from here, but for instance, not down here. It would stop it. You could actually visually see it stop the flame front at whatever stage in here it does that at. Okay? So the flame would always go in through this side? Yeah, I think that's the way it's designed. Or no, let's see. It has a direction to it. You want the flame to come back on itself, so I guess you enter it through here because this way it goes back around to itself, whereas if you entered it this way, it wouldn't do that. No. So there's a direction. It's sort of like if somebody was chasing you and you ran through a doorway and you slammed the door behind you. Then you ran through another doorway and you slammed that door also. And you did it four times. And hopefully they would stop chasing you by the time you got to the fourth door. And that's what these, these four stages are. Okay. All right. Well, it was nice meeting you, James. Have a good day. Likewise, and I thank you for having been here to help with this event. Okay, I will. See you at the next energy conference, maybe. I hope so. Have a good day. You too.